Hi, my name is Kate Garcon, and I am the founder of Guided Parenting Support. I'm a GPS for parents, and I thought I would put together a quick little webinar session that you can watch at your leisure uh, with some things to think about with summer coming, because summer is coming. Uh, last week, I went and had lunch with a friend uh, and she's fully vaccinated, I'm fully vaccinated. And I got to her door and I knocked on the door and without even thinking about it, I took a step back uh, to give her space. And she opened the door and she said, hey, it's great to see you. And she invited me inside and I paused because I haven't stepped inside someone's house without a mask on in 14 months. And I got inside and she threw her arms around me to give me a huge hug. And it was equally amazing and nerve wracking because I haven't hugged someone besides my husband in 14 months. And I was standing in the kitchen talking to her and her mom, who's also fully vaccinated. And I had to force myself to move closer than six feet because I've gotten so used to giving people space. And when I was thinking about summer coming and what that's like for kids, I realized if I've ingrained these habits in myself in 14 months out of my 40 something lifespan, that's you know less than 2% of my life has been spent in pandemic mode. But if you're a 10 year old where a year of your life is 10% or a five year old where a year of your life is 20%, how ingrained and weird must it feel to, to be coming out of this pandemic and, and having the rules change? You know, think about how easily habits get formed in kids, right? You give a four-year-old ice cream two days in a row, and she suddenly thinks she's getting ice cream every day for the rest of her life, right? Bam, a habit is formed. So you take 10% of their life or 20% of their life, and you drill into them that they have to wear a mask and keep their distance and stay with their families and stay home. And it means that the reopening process is going to feel really, really weird. So I thought about uh, some things that might be considerations for your family. They might apply to you, they might not, um, or there might be totally different things that apply to you. What I thought today, though, is I want to offer you some emotional considerations and some practical considerations with summer coming, and then a few things to think about as the new school year approaches. And hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, everybody is back in school full time in person. So um, grab a pencil and paper, grab a beverage of your choice, and maybe jot down if there's anything that resonates with you. Um, there might be things in here that you think, oh yeah, that totally sounds like my kid, I should keep that in mind. There might be things that you think, um, no, that doesn't sound like my kid at all. But it will give you uh, some considerations and then some strategies uh, that you can apply no matter what the situation. So let's start with some of the emotional stuff. Um, I shared with you a little anecdote about how weird it felt for me. I was excited and a little bit nervous. And for your kids, excitement and nervousness feel the same in their gut. It's really hard to separate out excitement and nervousness. So the best way that I can offer you to know what's going on with your kids, what they're thinking, what they're feeling is to ask them. And having a conversation with a kid is very different than having a conversation with an adult, right? You all know that. Um, but if you lead with, hey, so we're going to get together at grandma and grandpa's this weekend, and we're going to be inside for dinner. What do you think about that? and then just wait, leave room for silence, leave room for them to think about what they feel. And they might say, oh, it's fine. And then you could say something like, okay, you know, if you um, think of anything you're excited about or anything you're nervous about, I'd love to talk to you again. You just, just come find me and then leave it at that. Um, it might be that they are nervous about hugging people again, right? Everyone's got that one great aunt who uh, hugs too tight and holds on too long and maybe smells like Mentos and Chantilly lace. And so, uh, you know, they might be hesitant to hug them. And so that's a great opportunity to talk to them about some other strategies to problem solve other ways that they can still be polite and still be respectful and also respect their own need 
to, to do things in their own time and have their own space. And maybe that's looking them in the eye and shaking their hand. Maybe that's waving hello from across the room. And you can help your kids, depending on their age, to advocate for themselves, to say, Aunt Susan, I'm so happy to see you and I'm not ready to hug you yet. So I'm just gonna wave to you from over here. If they are not ready to advocate for themselves, or you know that there's someone in your family or friendship group who's not gonna take no for an answer, then you might wanna just reach out to that person ahead of time and give them a heads up and, uh, and thank them for their support in advance. It might be that you've got a 10 year old or a 12 year old who loves to roughhouse with their buddies and they haven't done it in so long, they don't realize how much stronger they are now than the last time they were roughhousing and wrestling with their friends and that their friends are also going to be stronger. And so what starts off as playful tumbling uh, might turn into concussions and fractures. So um, having a conversation ahead of time about some of the expectations, some of the ground ruling, some of the boundaries when your kids are leaving your home to go out and be with other people. Um, another example is if your kid has been invited to a neighbor's or a friend's for dinner and you're thinking, oh no, we've kind of let our table manners slide the last couple of months or the whole last year, you know, maybe, and this is no judgment, every family looks different, but maybe things have gotten a little lax because that just wasn't where you wanted to spend your energy. And you're thinking, oh my God, what if my kid goes to someone's house for dinner and you know, they've totally forgotten their table manners and they bring their cell phone to the table and it's just a nightmare. So you can kind of head that off. Um, partly with those conversations, you know, is there anything you're excited about? What are you nervous about? What feels hard? Um, how will you handle it if you uh, make a mistake when you're at the dinner table? Those kinds of things. And then you can also say to them, hey, you know, we've gotten a little relaxed with our table manners. Um, remind me, how do we behave when we go to other people's houses? And that's going to feel better for your kid than a lecture, than you saying to them, okay, you need to remember when you get there, you take your shoes off and you shake your hand and you look them in the eye and then you sit up straight at the table and you chew with your mouth closed and you say, please and thank you. And you don't reach across the table and you don't bring your cell phone and you keep your feet on the floor. Your kids are going to feel bombarded. They're not going to remember any of that stuff. And it also doesn't give them credit for what they know. So by asking them to remind you of how things work, um, it's gonna pre prepare them, make them feel respected. And for kids who have ADHD, for example, or who are otherwise neurodiverse, um, talking through the process is gonna make it stick better for them than if you're telling them the process and expecting them to remember. So maybe you have teenagers, teenagers who are uh, going back to going to parties again, or who were too young for parties before the pandemic, but now they're at that age where they wanna go. And you're worried about curfews, about drugs, about alcohol, about sex, about all sorts of things. My first suggestion would be for you to do a little exploring about what it is that you're anxious about or what you're afraid of. And just dig into that a little bit and see, you know, is this their issue or is it my issue? And then, same principle applies, talk to them about it. Ask them what they're excited about. Ask them what they're nervous about. Ask them what feels hard. Ask them if there's, they need any support. There is a phrase that is uh, incredibly useful as a parent and it's, how can I help? Because it opens the door for them to say, I just need someone to talk to, or I've got this crush on somebody and I'm really scared about how I'm gonna to talk to them when I see them at this party, or I don't know how to handle it if someone pushes me to drink, whatever it might be. When you open the door with how questions, what questions, and how can I help, you are opening the door to a, a beautiful relationship with your kids, no matter the circumstances. So those are just a few examples of things that might come up as your kids and you are slowly starting to re-enter the world again. Um, bottom line there is um, prepare to be caught off guard, prepare for the unexpected, prepare for things to be weird. Things that you might not think about, your kids might have a different response to. Things that you're excited about, your kids might have a different response to. Um, so, you know, asking questions, leaving space for silence so that they can answer you in their own time and leaving the door open so they can come back and continue the conversation. These conversations are rarely one and done. So now let's think about, oh, actually one more thing. Um, a great uh, kind of door opener for conversations, especially with tweens and teens is 
I've noticed, insert thing there, I've noticed that you get really giddy, um, giddy and kind of energetic and, and um, bubbling when we talk about getting together with our friends this weekend. What's up? And then just wait. You know, I've noticed that you get really quiet when we talk about going back to school in the fall, in person, full time. What's up? And then just let them talk. Behavior is communication. So even if they're not talking about it, you know your kid best. If you notice that they are acting different, they're acting off, um, dig into that a little bit because it, uh, it could be a sign that there's something else there that you need to, to explore. So now the practical, what to do with them all summer. Um, one thing I would really encourage for you to not do is do not spend the whole summer focusing on preparing for school. Um, this concept of learning loss is a scary one for parents and really, you know, your, your kids are going to be okay. As long as they know that they can come to you, they can talk to you and that you're going to be there to support them. So if you are concerned about some specific things, academic things, um, talk to your kids and ask them what they're worried about what they're nervous about, what feels hard for them. Your seventh grader might say, I'm actually really worried about math. I feel like I didn't learn enough. And then together you can problem solve what that's gonna look like. It might be summer school, it might be tutoring, it might be an online course, but you, your, your child initiated the problem. Your child expressed what they needed. You asked how you could help and together you problem solve the solution. If you decide unilaterally that your kids are gonna be in summer school or they're gonna be working with tutors or you create a schedule for every single day that's going to um, improve their academics, you're probably gonna get pushback. And you know the brain is an association maker. Anytime there is a power struggle or a battle, right? you know this with toddlers and eating, anytime there's a power struggle or a battle, they are gonna start associating that thing with stress and with tension, and it's gonna make it that much harder. So save yourself the battle and just talk to them. And you can share your concerns, absolutely. But ultimately, even if you really, really think they need tutoring or summer school, if they're not on side, it's going to be a waste of everybody's time and a waste of your money, and it's gonna damage your relationship in the long term. So, other things you can do over the summer that are going to benefit their school readiness in an indirect way are to think big picture about what you want September to look like. This might be screen time. You might realize that your family has gotten pretty lax with screen time. Everyone's got their own devices and you're kind of on them 24 seven. Don't judge yourself. Don't blame yourself. Sit down with your family, talk about your concerns, listen to their concerns and together problem solve what you want that to look like so that September is easier. The night before school starts is not the time to say, everybody hand in your devices, we're going cold turkey. You wanna gradually and gently plan together how you wanna change your habits. You wanna implement that and then you wanna troubleshoot it and reflect on it and adjust it so it works for everybody, okay? Sleep is another big one. I've got some families where all the kids are sleeping in the same bed or the whole family's having slumber parties in the living room because that's where everyone feels safest. And while that's okay sometimes, if that's become the routine and it's not working for the family, think about what your family needs in terms of sleep and those routines and those habits and start putting it in place over the summer, okay? Um, household responsibilities and chores is another big one. If you think back to your life before the pandemic, and whether or not it was actually working for every person in the family. When September rolls around and people are back at work and kids are back at school and there's soccer practice and swimming lessons and dance practice and piano and homework and, 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 do you want your family's life to go back to the way it was? Or do you want something different? And again, talk to your kids, right? Even little kids four and five years old can have input in how they want their family to feel, right? If they want it to be calmer and more peaceful. And everyone should be involved in chores and responsibilities. It doesn't just belong to the adults in the house. 
So use the summer to get those things in place and collaborate on schedules. Use that time to help your kids learn the skills they're going to need so that when September rolls around, they're able to get themselves dressed and make their own lunches and put their own laundry away and take out the garbage and walk the dog and all those things that need to happen. Okay. Um, something else to think about over the summer, everyone wants their kids to be empathic and compassionate. And that happens by action. It happens by learning about and understanding the lives of other people, caring about the lives of other people, and then taking steps and action to make the lives of other people better. That's how kids learn perspective taking. So put some time and effort into thinking about how your family can be of service to others. What are your kids' skills? What are their interests, right? Can they be cleaning up a local park, helping elderly or disabled neighbors with their yard cleanup or moving boxes or organizing books on the shelves? Can they be doing extra chores to earn money to make donations to certain organizations that are important to them? Can they play music on the lawn, do an, uh, a, a mini concert at a senior's home? Brainstorm with your kids, let them generate ideas and encourage them to do the research. You know, they can be doing Google searches and finding phone numbers and calling these places. They can call the food bank. They can call the homeless shelter. They can call the daycare center. They can call the community center or the seniors home. Practice with them, uh, you know, how those phone calls are going to go so they know what to ask. Maybe it helps them to write a script. They are building their compassion, building their perspective taking, and those lifelong skills that we want our kids to have. And then, you know, beyond that, when you're thinking about the activities the kids are going to do for the summer, it's truly not your responsibility to entertain them. You need to keep them safe. You need to keep them alive. But really, if you're looking at the long-term goal of parenting, which is to raise children who become adults, who are successful in the unknown world, they're going to need skills like confidence, resilience, problem solving, time management, uh, organization, budgeting, um, they're going to learn, how, they're going to have to know how to communicate and collaborate. And the activities that they do over the summer and on the weekends, the household chores, all of those things contribute to that. So instead of thinking about keeping them entertained, think about engagement. So for example, if you're eight-year-old or your 12-year-old or your 15-year-old, ask them what they're interested in doing over the summer, what kind of projects they're interested in doing. It might be redecorating their room. It might be uh, composing a piece of music and recording a music video. It might be writing a play. Um, you know, six, seven, eight-year-olds who are really springing into being able to write, um, that explosion into reading and writing, they often love to write plays. And they can, you know, make costumes from things around the house and they can make sets from, you know, furniture and blankets in the living room and perform it for the family. Um, it might be cooking projects, baking projects, art projects. It might be gardening. It might be building something. Um, it might be science experiments. You know, the, the, the sky's the limit in terms of their imaginations. Let them generate the ideas. You lose nothing. You lose no time. You lose no resources for them to generate ideas and start planning. They can do research. How much do things cost? How much time do things take? And then conversations with them, you can establish what the parameters are, where they can do these sorts of things in the house, uh, the budget, what that's gonna look like. Um, you know, these projects might take a day, they might take a week, they might take the whole summer. For younger kids, it might be an hour, right? For a preschooler, the opportunity to walk into their playroom make a choice of an activity, gather the things they need. Maybe it's a puzzle, maybe it's blocks, whatever that looks like. Play with it, concentrate on it for as long as they want and clean it up and put it away. That's a project for them. And it builds their concentration, their organization, their problem solving and their independence. So in terms of what the kids are gonna do this summer, think about their age and stage of development. Think about their interests and let them generate the ideas and do as much of the planning as possible. Think maximum independence, minimal amount of supervision to keep them alive and safe. Um, and then, you know, kind of see where it goes. That's the beauty of it. You don't have to 
coordinate and entertain every single minute and then just kind of see where it goes. So in terms of the big takeaways from this, emotionally, be prepared for things to be a little bit weird, right? Unexpected things might happen. Um, your kids might be feeling things you weren't prepared for. Talk with them. Ask those how questions and those what questions, the how can I help? And really open the door to that communication. When they share with you what they're thinking and what they're feeling, problem solve together. Solutions are gonna be more durable, more long lasting, and they're gonna feel like they have more autonomy and more control if they are involved in the problem solving process. And then think big picture about how you want September to look for your family and work backwards from there. Think about screen time, think about sleep, think about household chores, and then think about the skills that those kids are building uh, through the, the activities um, that they are engaged with over the summer. Thank you for listening. If you have questions, if you want to book one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, if you want a whole bunch of short video tips and like, I mean short, like two to five minutes of video tips, all of it is available on my website www.guidedparentingsupport.com. I also have a private Facebook group that is just for parents and it's a place, a safe and non-judgmental space where you can ask questions, you can uh, share things you're worried about and I moderate everything um, so that you can be assured that uh, the advice you're getting, the support you're getting is, is warm and inclusive and, and that the strategies are, are valid. Um, and you can find that at facebook.com backslash groups backslash, backslash backslash guided parenting support. Uh, and good luck, enjoy your summer.